press the button. And away we go. Ahoy! Aside. Man your stations! Yes! Come down from the crow's nest before you get yourself killed! Play port side anchor! Fire the grappling hooks! Prepare to board the ship! Drop the gangplank! All hand hoy! Ah! What do you want? Captain, the other ship has been crippled, and the crew has surrendered. Oi, thank you. What's the damage blankly? Captain, we have taken damage in the starboard. We lost a cannon, but we will be easily back up and running at full sail before sundown. Their hull is taking on water, and won't likely be afloat for another couple hours. We could try to repair the damage, but... Chances are we'll run out of supplies and still lose the vessel. What about the bounty? The men are currently assessing the situation. Very well. Good work. Hey guys, we jumped headfirst in today's Mercury Theater Podcast episode, Captain Fearless. We're going to join First Mate Blankly as he adventures on a privateer with an overstressed Captain Hornsby. Before we proceed, go ahead and give us a five-star review on your podcast player right now so other people can find this podcast easier. Yeah, that's right. So scroll right on down and there. There you go. Tap those five stars. Excellent. Now back to Captain Fearless. So don't turn that dial. Uh, Your men would like you to board the ship, Captain. I have no desire to... Captain. I... that would be best. You poor soul shouldn't have tried to come to the colonies today. You'll never reach land, unless you submit to me now. I gather that by your cuffs you assume to have no choice. But rest assured, you do. Who here would rather not submit to the colonies? Here I am, offering you a way out, and you dare not take it? Would you truly rather be held below? You'll always wonder why you didn't take the freedom I so graciously offer you now. This is truly a shame. Ah, very good. Are you volunteering to go free? I ca- I am. Gentlemen, we have a volunteer. Get her and let's release her to freedom. Ugh. Come on, the captain wants your freedom. Struggle, and we'll cleave you to the brisket. Let's go this way. You have noticed our men dropping sludge into the water. No, lass, that wasn't pitch from swab on the deck. That is yesterday's unfinished dinner. Ugh. Right about now, we could be seeing Bruce any moment. Or not. Sometimes it's too cold to find any interest in you. Let me take these off your hands. Can't have you taken my shackles, can we? You can now walk ten paces in that direction. There are only four paces before she walks off. She'll be fishing. I won't! I'm sorry, lass. I told you to walk. Walk to freedom!
Anyone else interested in walking to freedom? How about you? Your wrists look sore. You? Nay. And why are you still here? Board your new ship and go below. Blankly, take the captain to my quarters. He deserves to be treated as a gentleman. See to it. Get the bounty off this boat before she goes under, and... the food this time. We can't have a repeat of last time. I see they made you at home, Captain. They did. As much as I can be, anyway. Hmm. I have some bad news for you, though. Your ship is sinking. It took on damage, and I cannot spare the men to pilot it, even if it could be mended. She's going down, and you're going to join us ashore. That stands to reason. Why would pirates such as yourselves take us as prisoners, instead of just taking our weapons and leaving us to sink along with my ship? Captain, <laughs> you mistake me as some kind of pirate. I am merely a privateer at the Order of the Colonies. I have a letter of mark and reprisal, which shows I am but a lowly servant of my country. I have very little authority here. A privateer by the colonies. And what is your name, Captain? I am Captain Clay Hornsby. Who might you be? I am Captain Morgan Pritchard of His Majesty's ship, the Mallet. Might I ask where we are headed from here? We are five days' journey to port. Your men will be held prisoner in Richmond, Virginia. As you can gather, we are a fairly civil bunch. Your men will be treated well, but you will be staying there for a while. Having stated this, we do wish to stay friendly. Where are the valuables aboard your ship? While throwing one of my hands overboard to drown or be eaten by sharks is not what I would refer to as civil. I can appreciate your hospitality. But I must tell you, there is nothing of value aboard the HMS Mallard. We're merely a vessel of war. We have no purpose with the finer things, when we are likely to be taken into situations such as this. I understand, Captain. I am afraid this will not do, though. My ship, for cruel delight, has sent over a dozen ships to their watery graves, and each one we have had the pleasure of plundering. We've gained many riches by this. Is there any way you might remember where the loot is about your ship? I would have told you. I have nothing to lose at this point by telling you. Everything has been taken from me. You have seen to that. Would you care for an apple, Captain? Yes, please. Pan, could you grab us a couple of apples? Right away, Captain. They're quite good. We got them from shore a mere two days ago. Picked straight from the tree. There you go, Captain Hornsby. Thank you. Now... Where did you say the bounty was? There isn't any. We have it on good authority that we would have purchased three supplies in the West Indies. You certainly cannot purchase goods without money. Captain, if I may. By all means, let me know. I can. Time is running low. Very good, Captain. Far better than last time. And last time, we still got the booty. Very good. What do you say, lads? Three cheers? Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Found it! Of course we did. What did I say, Cap? You there. Son, come here. How old are you? Twelve years of age, sir. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, <coughs> um, scum. <laughs> You're just about my boy's age. He's thirteen. How long have you lived in the colonies? Well, my father says that we live in the independent colonies. All right, son. How long have you lived in the independent colonies? Well, I was born in England. We moved here about three years ago. Do you miss home, son? I didn't have to be on a ship. I stayed home with mother. And where is she now? She died of typhoid. That's dreadful. King George has been feeding us well at home. Are you eating enough here, in the colonies? When we get home, 
But we're only there- You boy, get on deck. The mast needs tending to. You there, stop talking to the crew, or I'll make sure you don't make it to Virginia. I didn't mean anything by it, sir. He's a good boy. Well deserving of a cake when he gets back to shore. You keep to yourself. Aye, sir. I miss home. My poor misguided boy. Come, talk with me. You made me come aboard a great vessel. If you think that, you're wrong. I'm aboard the SS MTP, stuck inside the stainless steel Mercury Theater podcast water bottle. I'm quite tiny. That's why my voice is so weird. I've been trying to sail out of here for some time now, but I get nowhere. Sometimes I get shaken and the waves and wind pick up, but I still get nowhere. Maybe you can help let me out. Just email John at MercuryTheaterPodcast.com with your name and you'll be signed up to win this water bottle in the raffle. You can't win unless you apply. Again, sign up to win this free water bottle by emailing your name to John at MercuryTheaterPodcast.com to sign up. Don't forget to spell theater with the R before the E. The winner is announced in the March 29th episode. Redemption details and confirmation email. If you want to add a note to the sailors at Mercury Theater, feel free to add that too. Maybe I'll still be in here. Hopefully not. I need some fresh air! Hello? 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 Captain, you stay in here. You there. You come with me. What's the meaning of all this? Captain, the prisoners have overtaken the lower decks. We'll get them back in order, sir. Say that you do. I thought you said you would get them back in order. This doesn't appear to be back in order. My apologies, Captain. I had no idea it would be marooned by our own men. I was taken by surprise, just as you were. Last thing I remember is having been in the cabin with the Captain Pritchard, learning of the location of the loot. Next thing I know, we're given two barrels to float to shore on. I know in my years, I've never... Aye, sir. We need to find shelter and get ready for a long haul. According to Sailing Master Hagsley, we were almost to the sugar route from the West Indies. So we should be picked up in just a matter of a few days. Tell me, Captain. How do you come to acquire the cruel delight? You don't strike me as the type wanting to captain a ship. We're not about to get friendly just because we're about to die on this godforsaken island. Mm, if we do die, wouldn't it be better to know you died having a friend to die beside? Blankly the poet. <laughs> uh, I had no interest in the sea. I'm deathly afraid of it. I'm afraid of most everything. Heights, women, fighting, cannon fire. But my father was a tobacco plantation owner. Very wealthy, as you can imagine. But he wanted his children to fight in the war. He bought me a ship to command, sent me on my way. And years later, and here I am, your captain. Hmm. How long have you been a captain now? Let's see now, uh, 13 years? Aye, 13 next month. What about you, Blankley? How long have you been amongst the seafaring militia? 10 years. Always loved the sea. Always hated the pork ashore. The grog is best. The sound of the sails, the excitement of the chase of a red coat ship. The chaos when boarding the enemy vessel. Ah, uh, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I would kill to be an admiral, charging a fleet of privateers against the English. But here we are, lost my father's ship, lying by the fire awaiting our impending doom. Not at all, Captain. We still have time. We found a creek over there. We appear to be in the best spot to have been marooned in the entire ocean. Besides, Virginia is cold this time of year. We'll get the cruel delight back. I promise you. Let's not forget who promised we'd have the ship back under control before. Aye, Captain. 
Let me ask you a question, sir. Why are you so insistent to pay the 50% to the colonies for all our earnings? Are you familiar with the letter of mark and reprisal? It states that we are legal pirates who pay 50% of our earnings to not be hanged. Yes, but they risk nothing and still get half the spoils. The colonies abound with possibilities, possibilities you can only dream of back in Britain. Sailors for the Navy are paid a much smaller wage than you get. Why? Do you not have enough gold? Am I not paying you enough first mate blankly? No, no, Captain. I'm doing all right. Captain, what is your worst fear? Drowning? No question. What about you, Blankley? Dying without my name being remembered would have to be my greatest fear. Captain Hornsby! Wake up! There's a ship on its way right there! Yo! Ahoy there! Thank you ever so much for picking us up. Captain, I do understand the need for shackles, but do you mind removing us from the bowsprit? I feel like I'm about to crack Jenny's teacup with this wooden mermaid. Frankly, I do believe I have a solution to our precarious situation. If we swing our legs over to the one side together, we may just be able to get ourselves off the hook and free without falling overboard. What say you? I say you go first. That wouldn't work, Blankly. We need to work together. Swing starboard and then port. Agreed? On three. One. Two. Two and a half. Three. <laughs> like a charm. Oh. Oh. You take the helm, Blankly. Old man the crew. On second thought. Aye, I'll take the crew. Take this raft's anchor. Defend yourself! I don't know how many more of these men I can take. Go to the port side. Nobody is that way. The ship's port side or our port side? Port side! No, you, no your other port side! Last it all. Go starboard! Take the helm. I'll keep them off us. I'm keeping our head in that direction. With the rain, we can make up for lost time. The crew delight wouldn't risk the sails, and the wind has sped us up. I think I know where Captain Pritchard is going. He's likely heading for the Loyalists in Wilmington. The crew delight used a great portion of the ammunition in the battle against him, and he'll need to regroup. It's lucky that the men already wanted to revolt. They're gun runners, unaffiliated with battles, landlubbers. And here you had me use an anchor as a weapon. <laughs> Use the tools you have available. No way I see it, Captain. These munitions were going to be yours in the end anyway. Why fight you? Crow's nest! What do you see? Joey's the red inside! That has to be the crew delight. One in the British flag. They're low on munitions. And there's the faulty cannon on the raft port side. We'll sail alongside them. And whatever you do, don't hit my cabin. Captain, we can't go up against the cruel delight. It's a man of war. There are no fixed weapons on this. This is a merchant vessel. Besides, the rain will soak the powder. Well, first mate, that appears to be a problem you could easily fix. It is a gunship after all. A ship with guns and a gunship are two entirely different things. Fix that too. Aika! <clears throat> Look alive, crew! We're overtaking the cruel delight! Drop the jibs! Hoist up the weapons to deck! Prepare for battle! We ain't fit for battle, Captain! We were turned down at port to man frigates! We're merchants not by choice, but by circumstance! Oh, you'll not be required to fight them. There's a nice warm milk below the deck for you, straight from the cow. Go pour yourself some- We're pirates! Get to your battle station! Twelve knots, Captain. Throw the extra weight overboard. We'll make it up when we take the crew to light back. Extra weight, toss it. Blankly, how is the crew to light responding? No change in course, sir. Drop the jack. Race to Jolly Roger. 
unfortunate that every ship has a pirate flag just lying around. We don't have the element of surprise. We're outgunned, and our crew has gone off. Our only option is to go in guns a blazing, and pray Poseidon smiles upon us. Aye aye, prepare to fire at will! Oh, or just go ahead and fire at will! What does it matter? Down to Davy Jones we go anyway! Chain shot! Aim it at the masts! What are you trying to do, blankly? Decommission my ship? Or we can win! It's up to you, Captain! We're not sinking it! See the hull? No holes! These merchants couldn't hit the broadside of a ship if it killed them! My mast! We'll get you a new one! Great shot, sailor! I'm not an angry man, Captain. Not generally. But you, sir. <laughs> you took my ship. And there's not much respect I have for a man who takes my ship. I had to do what was best for His Majesty King George, and taking your ship was the only solution I was given. In all fairness, you would have done the exact same thing had you been in my situation. As an officer in the King's Navy, I do what I am told, and preferably staying alive whilst doing it. I am trying to enforce the King's realm, and as a pirate, you are- Privateer, Captain. As a colonial privateer, you are a defector to the King. On second thought, maybe you wouldn't have done the same as I have, seeing as how you are a traitor. The colonies are English settlements. You sailed across the ocean and decided you didn't need to prove fealty to the King who supported you. Revolting against England is nothing shy of deserving of a traitor's death. History will be written, and you will be known as the Tyrants. Assuming we don't win the war. Win? Win what? You don't like paying taxes? I don't like paying taxes. And yet I am still loyal. Your nation will still charge taxes to pay for its infrastructure. The only question is to whom you pay taxes. To the king? Or to your new king? Is that truly worth dying over? The only thing you have in your favor is the distance from England. But we aren't above coming all this way to remind you of your king's wishes. This isn't about the king. This is about my ship. You took my ship, and for that, you will be hanged. Blankly, please have the captain removed. We sail for Virginia. Captain Blankly, it is always a pleasure to have you. What brings you to shore today? This is Hornsby. It is truly a delight to see you as well. I am only here to discuss matters of business with the Admiral. Of course. Admiral Hornsby is in his office. Can I fix you some tea? Captain Blankly hasn't had a drop of tea since the party is 73. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> come in, come in. I have to hand it to you, sir. You've done it. You have the wife you deserve and have the fleet you never wanted. And the admiration your father wanted for you. But you, sir, have the desk job you always desired. I have to admit it. You've made it. Do you recall the time you and I were marooned on that island in the West Indies? I really wish I couldn't. That was the moment I realized you were a true person, and not just a cowering captain. Which makes it all the more difficult to tell you that I've taken your fleet. Then again, you and your proclivity to pay in 50% of our earnings to retain the mark of reprisal have cost you your men their potential earnings, and ultimately your fleet. The privateers are leaving the Colonial Navy, and have become true pirates. You can't take my ships. But you see, I already have. The captains have joined in, or left, I should say. We have gone on account, so to speak. We would like you to lead us, but we will not pay the taxes on our earnings. We're the ones risking our lives, and your ship has taken all the hits, and we've only gotten half. Not anymore, Admiral. Come with us. Let's earn and keep everything we conquer. I will not let you do this. 
You would be outcast. You could never return to the colonies. You'd be hanged for treason. A traitor of a traitorous nation is quite fitting. Come with us. I will have you hanged for this. I would never betray this nation. It is truly unfortunate to hear that. I have enjoyed... Well, maybe enjoyed is the wrong word. Ah, well. Be well, Admiral. I guess you should be addressing me as Admiral in your stead. That is of no matter. Be well, Clay Hornsby. It isn't too late to decide against tyranny. Your ships are no longer at port. A Corsair is the only one left, and they are only waiting on my return. I would venture to say that now is indeed too late. We are now pirates, and you are a fleet shy of admiralty. Goodbye. Mrs. Hornsby. Blankly! I'll have you in prison for this! Prison would be the least of my concerns with my newfound piracy! It isn't too late! Get off that ship, you build sucking ship and! Sorry, Admiral. But don't step off the. Blankly! You know. You know, I can't. I can't swim! Should we go back and help the Admiral? No. He will be lost to the sea. The way he would have wanted it. As Captain Hornsby, I'm Angelo Cruz. As Blankly, this is Landon Lawrence. As Captain Pritchard, I'm Robin Robbins. As Sherman, I'm Thomas Hugh. As Nash, I'm Paul Wolf. As Finn, I'm Paige Elena. As Mrs. Hornsby, I'm Bryn Curry. As Pam, I am Kitten B. Trippin. As Prisoner, I'm Georgina Walkington. As the Merchant, I'm Victor Espinosa. Great work! You made it to the end of Captain Fearless, and we tricked you yet again into listening to Mercury Theater Podcast. I would like to thank all of my voice actors for being amazing. To Joseph Weatherford for writing the theme music and permitting us to use it. A special thanks also goes to Julie Collins for her playing the theme on the organ. Kara Fox, thank you for trying your hand at voice acting, and sorry I didn't quite pan out this go-round. If you want to learn more about Mercury Theatre Podcast, go to mercurytheaterpodcast.com or find us on all the socials at Mercury Theatre Podcast. There's just way too much to fit in this outro, trust me. Before you go, there is still time to apply for the absolutely free stainless steel MTP water bottle. We also have an extra episode coming out in February with my interview with Georgina Walkington. Until then, I'm John Badger. Now what?